fighting women? They've existed throughout history. There were lone fighters like Joan of Arc, while it was the ancient Greeks who spread the myth of an entire nation of fighting women who were organized in an all-women state. Their legends tell of the Amazon queen Penthesilea. She fought with her army of women on the side of Troy. Achilles defeated her in single combat and fell in love with the dying beauty. Which aspects of the ancient myth and reports contain any grain of truth? Renate Rolle lives near Hamburg. It's thanks to an initiative she launched that scholars have been looking into the Amazons more intensely since the 80s. The Amazons have been mythologically hyped up, and as a result, in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, we don't really talk about them, or only in quotation marks. But it can't be denied that they were female warriors. The skeletons have signs of serious injuries, some of them healed, some of them not, so we can conclude the weapons weren't just standing around at home. They were used for fighting quite frequently. The Amazons have inspired the imagination of many. In a world dominated by men, women who fought their enemies must have seemed adventurous. They threatened the male fantasy that they were the rulers of the world. But the notion of fighting women has another appeal, and even more so the notion of a state where women alone have the say. There are some striking features. They're downright demonized. The impudence of these women to enter a man's domain and to fight successfully. That must have been very tough for the Greeks. Another striking aspect is that they're always described as beautiful. Think of Achilles. He was afraid in the face of this beauty. It's mentioned time and again in the Greek milieu that pentathletes were the most beautiful people in the world. The extreme sporting commitment led to a certain physical appearance, such as slimness and fitness. You see this classical ideal reflected today in female endurance riders and female pentathletes. The women warrior style of warfare is said to have been incredibly modern. They were faster than their enemies on horseback. They were more agile, fighting with small knives rather than with long swords. The arrowheads weren't flat in the conventional manner. They were Y-shaped and barbed. At the core, the question is whether archaeological discoveries can really confirm the existence of an Amazon state. A state where they didn't just fight among men, but also ruled. Scholars have been arguing about this for decades. Some, like Renate Rolle, are accused of over-interpreting discoveries. 
Florian Knaus is the director of the Glyptothek and State Collections of Antiquities in Munich. His institution houses exhibits from Greek antiquity, which allow a wide range of interpretations about the lives and battles of the Amazons. The Amazons are a fantasy product, a Greek male fantasy. The first mention is in Homer, in other words, in the mid-8th century BC. But these Amazons never existed in that form. There were no real women they were based on either. They were created in opposition to the real world of the antiquity. The Greeks fought with many mythical beings, and we don't believe any of them existed either. Centaurs, for example. The idea of fighting women was the most ludicrous concept a Greek man could come up with. One Greek author wrote about an Amazon state in the wide plains around the Black Sea, in what's now southern Ukraine. Many things Herodotus wrote about in his histories have been proved by archaeological investigations. He reported on Scythian festivals and customs, as well as on the arrival of the Amazons in Scythia. Can the scholarly argument about the Amazons be settled using modern scientific methods? Up until the late 20th century, archaeologists only used grave gifts to determine the gender of a skeleton. Anthropologists weren't involved, even though there were a few different approaches as early as the 19th century. Yeah, I had I wrote my dissertation in Germany. It was about burial rituals, grave construction and the whole death ritual. There were a lot of burials of women which were documented quite normally in the catalogue. I noticed that from 1890 onwards, experts started discussing whether there had been women warriors. A famous Russian archaeologist, Count Bobrinsky, determined with the help of a medical expert at the end of the 19th century that such women warriors existed. In order to provide sound scientific evidence of the existence of women warriors, the archaeological situation has to be transparent. What skeletons were found where? What grave gifts were found with the dead? Many of the early finds weren't catalogued and stored in accordance with modern standards. These first ones that I just mentioned at the end of the 19th century were some of the most sensational. The women's tombs also contained weapons, including weapons from different fighting disciplines, such as swords, lances, arrows and so on. Hundreds of digs have been conducted in the Ukraine in the past 120 years. Many graves were found that don't match the experiences of Western European archaeologists. They have provided sustenance for the idea of fighting women. Then we have something that archaeologists call a mixed inventory. It was typically considered that jewellery was placed in a woman's grave and weapons in a man's. And that's completely wrong, of course.
a mixed inventory can be interpreted differently too. One hypothesis suggests that weapons in women's tombs are included vicariously for absent husbands. Frau Rolle is der Meinung, Renata Roller believes that depictions of Amazons in the 5th century are a realistic image of these warrior women. But these Amazons are dressed in fantasy clothes. The costumes contain some Scythian elements, some Persian elements, but also some Greek elements. These women warriors are fighting with oriental weapons that no enemy of the Greeks ever used. A Scythian woman won't have looked like that. The Glyptotheque in Munich houses the ancient Greek ceramics on which our knowledge of the Amazons clothed is based. The Greek artists didn't have to go looking in Eastern Europe for examples of the fantasy clothes they painted. They were always in close contact to the Persian Empire. In around 500 BC, there were even Scythian archers who served as a kind of police force. Colorful patterned fabrics and tight trousers instead of flowing gowns recall the riding dress of the Scythians. Most depictions we have of the Amazons are on Greek pottery, or Attic pottery in particular. These were everyday objects and were used very much during a symposium, a Greek drinking party. Upper-class men got together to drink wine out of such vessels. The pictures on these vessels often depict mythical scenes. Den Wein aus solchen Gefäßen geschöpft. Die Bilder auf diesen Gefäßen, die häufig Szenen des Mythos zeigen. One of their purposes was to inspire dinner table conversation. And what could be a more suitable topic than an exciting legend? Als eine spannende Sage. Brave and beautiful women. Were the Amazons merely an erotic male fantasy for jolly evening parties? Or did Herodotus really see the female warriors in the land of the Scythians? We have black and red depictions on Greek ceramics and also sculpted depictions where we can see that the Amazons are largely dressed in men's clothes. The Greeks must have encountered the Scythians in Greece and we know that during that time, from the 5th century BC onwards, there was a lot of travel. Herodotus went to the northern shores of the Black Sea and he emphasizes several times in his book that he had seen it with his own eyes. I think Herodotus is absolutely believable. A bloody battle ensued and Heraclus and his companions defeated the Amazons on the Terma River. The surviving Amazons were taken to their boats to be brought to Greece as prisoners. But on the open sea, the Amazons overpowered their guards. Then they were washed up on the northern shores of the Black Sea by the wind. There they allied themselves with the young Scythian men who lived there. But the Amazons replied, We can't live with your women. Our customs are too different from theirs. We draw bows, throw spears and ride horses. Those are our skills. But if you really want to keep us as your women, then go to your parents. Ask them to give you your inheritance and return to us, and you and we shall live here amongst ourselves. The men did as they had been asked, and so they founded the nomadic Sarmatian people. The Scythians had a different social order from the Greeks. They were nomads who traveled with their possessions to the best grazing pastures for their animals. This lifestyle may have been encouraged role reversals. Women had to act much more freely in such a society. That could also mean that a woman adopted the leadership position.
It is said of the Sarmatians, the eastern neighbors, that the women had a breast removed. It was burned off. To be eligible for marriage, they had to bring a man's skull, or maybe even three. Our Greek author wrote maliciously that some were old and died and couldn't fulfill this requirement. You can just picture it. I tell you, we're more than a myth. We bear the responsibility for our possessions, and we defend them with our lives if necessary. We hunt and look after our animals and raise the children. We lead our clans. We are master riders and experts in archery, wielding lances, daggers and battle axes. We go to war, alone or alongside men. Our enemies fear us for it, and they revere us for it too. The written sources say that the Sarmatians were particularly friendly with the Amazons, and that the first Amazons came about when handsome young Scythians and beautiful fighting women mixed and started their own tribe among the Sarmatians. That's a myth that's mentioned in Herodotus. In practice, there were far more women warriors in Scythia than in Sarmatia, although their numbers went up there too. All of Eurasia, from Eastern Europe, across the Volga, and as far as the Altai, is characterized by such phenomena. Wherever people couldn't rely on the protection of a city wall, the women had to be ready to defend themselves. To defend their tribe's herds, the women knew how to wield axes and machetes. The burial site of one Scythian king is located in Chetomnik in Ukraine. Such a burial site is known as a Kurgan. The first to investigate it were only interested in gold. The discovery wasn't documented in detail. That's why a new dig took place in the late 80s. There are lots of horses' skulls around the Kurgan. Herodotus reported that dead men were skewered on to slaughtered horses and then positioned as sentries around the mound. Untouched secondary tombs are now also being discovered. Skeletons with jewelry and weapons have been found, which have been examined by a forensic scientist and a paleopathologist. They established that many of the skeletons were female. So there were female warriors. What might their armor have looked like? Here we have some elements of the protective armor, Scythian scale armor. These are real artworks where every scale covers the next one by a third. We recreated some scale armor with some students and shot at it. We know the penetrating power. We did experiments in Kiev too, and we know that this armor is very good. It's good to wear and can stave off heavy blows from arrows. This is the replica of the famous pectoral from the Tolstaya Mogila in Orjonikzida. 
the original isn't allowed to leave Ukraine. It's a national treasure. It weighs almost two kilos. It is believed that these scenes depict Scythian life and their ideas of the netherworld. It's seen as a symbol of this world and the netherworld, which are separated by this ornamental strip. This mirror is also typically Scythian. Men's tombs, and even more so women's tombs, have such bronze mirrors, which are much nicer than our modern silver or mercury mirrors. Scythian mirrors created a beautifying reflection. At the Center for Anatomy at Göttingen University, the paleopathologist Michael Schulz is examining skeletal remains from Chertomlik in Ukraine using cutting-edge scientific methods. He was involved in the digs there. The exploration of Scythian tombs has become an interdisciplinary project. Scientists from many areas of expertise are involved. What surprised us about the dig in Chertomluk was that we found skeletons of women with signs of enlarged muscles and with weapons in their tombs. You can see here how we determine gender and age. You can tell from looking at the bones whether the body was put under increased stresses caused, for example, by the use of weapons, or whether the person was used to riding on horseback. We have the places where the calf muscle would have been attached. A rider would have a bump here, but it's smooth. This isn't a rider. The large adductor muscle attaches here to draw up the leg. Again, you can see it's completely smooth. In a rider, it would have been elevated. Do the skulls allow scientists to draw conclusions about the manner in which the deceased fought? Here, we have a skull that exhibits two very clear stab wounds caused by a bladed weapon. The stab came from behind, here. The man was probably running away as it happened. The impact split the skull. There's a second injury in the front here. The weapon must have got stuck. And while it was being pulled out, this piece of the skull came out. You can see the grooves the blade caused in the bone very well. Through his investigations, Michael Schulz is gathering a lot of information about the lives of these people. He can even reconstruct illnesses. Here, we have the upper arm bone of an Amazon. 
there's a pathological alteration to the bone, probably as a result of excessive use of weapons. We can see that alteration under the microscope. We have a section of the bone from an Amazon from Ak Alacha. It was stressed incorrectly during her lifetime. We can't see that in normal light, but in polarized light, we can see these osteans don't have a regular shape. We can see it even better when we make this red. Ein Kompensator, ein Hilfsobjekt rot erster Ordnung in den Strahlengang, kann man das noch besser sehen. Da können wir sagen, dass der Knochen the stress on the bone wasn't even. It was greatly impaired by a painful strain. Erheblich beeinträchtigt war, das hat wehgetan. She won't have been able to use this arm in a normal way anymore. So dass es im Knochen zu dieser Form einer as a result it atrophied and the bone tissue changed because it wasn't being used anymore aufgrund von nichtbelastung gekommen ist und das werden wir auch in kiew dann uns anschauen we'll look at that in kiev on the original amazon skeleton zu diesen vier bereits ausgegrabenen eine neu ein there's a new discovery in addition to these four that have already been uncovered. This new find is complete with the skull. I haven't seen that skeleton yet. We're going to make sure it's a woman and determine whether it was a woman who fought. The muscles in the arms and legs will tell us whether she was a warrior or a horsewoman, which is how we imagine the Amazons. Renate Rolle has a hypothesis about when aspiring Amazons started their training. The only option is to say that the girls needed to be as well trained as the boys. They had to be good archers and sword fighters. It must have been tougher when it came to throwing spears. You have to consider the anatomy of the female arm. They must have practiced very intensely from their earliest childhood. Scientists can only speculate about other aspects in the lives of these female warriors. Did they use makeup? Did they paint their bodies? Scientists have to draw conclusions by analogy. Because of the weather conditions, there are no discoveries from the countries in which the Scythians settled. There were women warriors in nomadic tribal society further north, in Siberia too. The bodies there were preserved in the permafrost. Some were discovered with tattooed skin. They make it probable that women also adorned their skin in this way. Ukraine has so many ancient Scythian burial mounds that there aren't the money or the people to explore them comprehensively. The archaeologists have to focus on those burial mounds that promise to give the most insights about the world the Scythians lived in. Truly sensational finds are rare, and Michael Schultz knows it. He's looking for firm evidence for the existence of the Amazons. All the discoveries are catalogued and conserved in the Academy of Sciences in Kiev. A woman's pointed head covering found in Chetumnik. The border is made of pure gold. The triangles are composed of individual gold drops, while the gold plates were made without modern tools. What's that discovery in the middle? It's wonderfully preserved. We also have the skull. That's the new discovery at Mi 84. Where's that? 
near Zaporizhia. That's an Amazon too. If we look at the forehead, then we can see that this part, the glabella, is straight. In men, it would bulge more. And the arch above the eyes is also flat instead of arched, as is the case with men. Another interesting feature is that these two bumps on the brow are somewhat developed. Whereas in men, they're smooth. From that, we can say that this brow exhibits female characteristics. We poison our arrowheads in a very special way. First, we bury our blood in containers in dung until it rots. Then we mix it with the decaying corpses of small vipers. This concoction in the wounds of our enemies kills them days after we hit them, even if the snake venom doesn't act right away. The Scythian weapons were as highly developed as the Scythian battle tactics. The shaft of an arrowhead was designed to break off when it penetrated the body. Barbs prevented the arrowhead from being pulled out again. In the top left corner, we have the remains of a composite bow, the dreaded weapon of the Scythians. We have two very well-preserved spearheads more weapons, as well as the dagger between the two mirrors. The shape of its handle is reminiscent of Western Asian cultures at that time. Then we have an assortment of different arrowheads. The sharp edges were capable of cutting through chain mail. If an arrow was fired at someone wearing chain mail, it would have been deadly. Were there rituals that bound the women warriors closer together? Renate Roller has a hypothesis. I have a theory about them being blood sisters, but that's a pure assumption. It's described a lot with men, but I can't prove it. I just think it's very probable. There are lots of references in the literature by writers such as Pseudo-Hippocrates confirming how important the custom of blood brothers was. I think warriors were bound to each other by a whole blood brother network. Michael Schulz is traveling from Chertumlik to the Crimea for the opening of a further tomb. In the Crimea, skeletons of women were found whose grave gift suggests that they had leadership positions in their community. It nevertheless remains controversial whether men and women were equal among the Scythians. We're on our way to the dig of Dr. Greshko, a colleague of Dr. Kozak at the Academy of Sciences in Kiev. We're going to follow the jeep to two Scythian kurgans. We're hoping they're unopened Scythian graves that haven't been plundered. Hopefully, they'll be Amazon graves. It's likely, but we can't be sure right now. Erwarten, aber wir können das im Augenblick ja noch nicht so sicher sagen. 
It takes an expert to see that the elevation in the distance is not a hill but a tomb dating back to Scythian times. This Kurgan is around nine meters high. It was built up from the most precious thing the nomads had, grass and soil from their animals' pasture land. We know from Herodotus the expression, the pyramids of the steppes, and it fits. Because when you look at the pictures here, they're very striking in the landscape. Herodotus also describes a gruesome story. Namely, that young warriors and their horses were killed and stuffed and fitted with weapons and then they were erected around the royal Kurgans. There tend to be several round tombs in a hierarchical arrangement. The most significant lies at the center of such a cemetery. Finding a women's skeleton in the middle of such a complex would alter our view of the society of that time. When we look at the cemeteries, the custom of that time was to be buried in a kurgan. We can see that the women also had the right to such a burial mound. And there are also some examples where armed women have been found in a Kurgan complex. The south coast of Ukraine. Archaeologists here are exploring what's myth and what was reality. Herodotus is said to have been here before he wrote about the Amazons. If his report is true, they could have made landfall on this coastline. The archaeologists in the old Scythian settlement are trying to get a picture of the people who used to live here. Such a dig is laborious because the nearest towns and villages are far away. The scientists sleep in tents and work in the boiling heat. Unfortunately, the grave from the time of the Scythian settlement isn't in the condition the archaeologists have been hoping for. The Scythians later removed all the bones and conducted their own burials. That's why we have several dozen bones of the local barbarian tribe here. They buried several bodies next to each other. And for the next burial, the old bones were just pushed under the wall and the new body was buried. Later, destruction is also making the archaeologists work harder. This discovery site is very interesting because we've got a rectangular ground plan, but it's severely damaged. It must have been plundered in ancient times already. And if you look around, you can see we're on farmland. Tractors and harvesters will have driven over this, and they'll have ploughed this complex to damage it further. The stones are all in a mess. Undamaged tombs are a rare find. Grave robbers existed as early as Scythian times and they still exist today. The Scythians try to protect their graves. Empty fake tombs were popular to distract from the main burial in a decentralized location. Grave robbers are the major drawback of these steps because you can see every burial mound from a long way off. And of course it's known that the most distinguished tomb is at the centre. So there hasn't been a single woman's tomb that hasn't been robbed yet. Gretschko's dig isn't without its findings. The discoveries were somewhat meagre. 
We have four bone fragments from the legs' long bones. There's no sign of osteoporosis on these fragments. That means this person can't have been older than 55. We've also found ceramics and animal bones. That suggests, as Herodotus described, that a feast was held at the grave. I never wanted to marry. The art of war was my life. I wanted to fight, and I did that in many battles, until I was seriously injured in my leg one day. Walking and riding is tough for me. Age has caught up with me. Of the fourth, uh, three uh, centuries BC. Mm -hmm. One thing that goes against Renate Roller's hypothesis of an Amazon state is that the number of skeletons of male warriors is much greater. No graves have yet been found where women were in the majority. The sun has baked the clay soils into a layer as hard as concrete. That makes the dig difficult. The archaeologists' work also causes irreversible damage itself. That's why they've divided the burial mound in the middle to document its structure in drawings and on photographs. The Scythian tomb is covered with heavy stones. Nothing that could be of significance must be damaged during the removal. The best tools for the job are a pointed trowel and a brush. The archaeologists are slowly approaching the site where they suspect the entrance of the tomb to be. It's difficult, time-consuming work. We're being very careful. This is probably the burial chamber. So the first stage of our work is done. The first few objects are found in the superficial layers. The team's hope that they will find a lot more is growing. Then the dig comes to a halt. The rock is too heavy. Greshko and his team need other equipment, which has to be brought here along one of the few roads. Every prognosis about what will be found in a tomb is speculative. The best case scenario is that the tomb will contain a Scythian woman with weapons. But that's not enough to prove the existence of Amazons. I and others don't deny that there were Scythian women who participated in hunting and fighting. But to prove the existence of an Amazon state, these women must have been in charge of the community, and the men mustn't have been equal fighters. Dürften die Männer nicht als gleichwertige Kämpfer mitgewirkt haben. Die Führung der skutischen it was heavily armed riders who were in charge of the Scythian mounted units. That hasn't been proved in a single case. And the Scythians also had a patriarchy, meaning a man led the group. That goes against the mythical traditions of the Amazon state.
Weeks later, back in Kiev, Greshko's dig isn't completed yet, but the first finds have arrived at the Academy of Sciences. They're being cleaned, catalogued, and conserved. Every discovery, never mind how small, is getting an inventory number. This number will also be tied to all the information that the scientists gather about the object. The place of discovery and the circumstances of discovery need to be documented for the next generation of scientists. The situation is so that here we have a woman's pelvis. This is the left hip bone. This groove is almost rectangular. In a man, it would be more pointed, so that I could cover it with my thumb. That's not possible here, and that's how we know this is a woman. She also had good muscles. She must have been training since childhood. Between these two molars, there is a small semicircular groove. A probe was inserted here and moved backwards and forwards. That's an oral hygiene practice. What's interesting is that this occurs four to five times more often among Scythian women than men. We can demonstrate that in these Scythian women, these Amazon skeletons. There's a discoloration which is rust. The remains of an iron sword. This woman had weapons in her tomb. And because of her strong muscles, that suggests that this was a female warrior. That proves that female warriors existed. But were these female warriors the mythical Amazons? Or did they just fit the existing picture at the right time? Can the female Scythian warriors prove the existence of an Amazon state? The Scythians were neither patriarchal nor matriarchal. They had a quite different model. It was underestimated for a long time. People thought it meant a low social status if a woman had to wield weapons. Some writers have tried to explain this female warrior phenomenon by saying young girls did it before marriage. But some women were quite old when they had weapons in their graves, and they clearly had been using them all their lives. I'm convinced that the Amazons would lose their appeal if we really had a matriarchal society where women were the warriors. Hundreds of thousands of women fought in the Red Army in the Second World War. Female American soldiers participated in the Iraq War and yet it's the exception for women to go to battle. Die Ausnahme, dass die Frau auf dem Schlachtfeld in Erscheinung tritt. Wenn diese Rolle einmal If this role became the norm, then the Amazons 
would lose their appeal and no longer be an exciting story. When I look back at my life today, I can say, I'm proud, proud of my life, proud of my deeds, and proud of our unique people.